Hi, and good morning. What a wonderful day to know the Lord, to have him to be a part of our lives and in our lives. And that's something we're going to deal with this morning, uh, Sunday morning, June the 28th, 2020. Uh, the blessed day of the Lord. No matter the rain, sunshine, hot or cold, the circumstances, the trials of life, whatever we're going through, the crushing, the the ellipses, as the tribulation word is in the in the Greek, it doesn't matter. What if we are being squeezed? It's a, it's a reason that the Lord has for us in that, and we He's gonna get the best of it out of it. We need to just pray and leave it all in His hands. Today, we are going to the gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter, and deal with a few verses there in, the, in, the, in that first part of that, that chapter. We all know that it, when we get to this point in the gospel according to St. John, that Jesus is headed toward the cross. He is, he is, his, his eyes and his face is set like flint. He is ready to secure our salvation. He's ready to go to the cross and die for our sins. His very purpose for being here, he had lived a perfect life in front of everyone that he had been around. And now his disciples have walked with him for three years and, and they have learned a lot from him and they're able to go and set the world on fire with this gospel message when he leaves. But now he's headed toward the cross and he's giving them some final instructions and, 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 and drawing a closer relationship, telling them about the relationship that he had with his father, the, the connection. And that's what we are. We, we kind of have, have, have named this. And, and we read these verses in the first part of this 15th chapter. I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Ye can do nothing. Connected is what we title this. Connected. Abide in me. The gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 5. Just how important is your connection? Now, we know about, about, about the telephone line. Now, at one time, we didn't have the, the lines that, like we have now where, where they are actually connected through the airwaves and, and, and connected wirelessly. But, but even if you're not paid into the system, even your wireless line can be disconnected. If you're not, it, it, and that's how important it is to be connected. And, and if you want to dial up someone and call them and you hadn't paid your phone bill and even though it's wireless, you're not hooked to a line where they go out and, and take the line loose and you're not connected, you're not connected. They can turn you off at the office and, and all of a sudden you, you, you have a deadline. Now, there is the song that we sing quite, we used to sing quite often in, 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 the, in the little old churches. And it said, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Yes, Jesus is definitely on the main line. As a matter of fact, the line that, that he's on is his own line, the line that he died for, that he secured through his death there at Calvary's cross. He secured that line. That's a line, but it is for special people. Only the people that believe what he did there at Calvary's cross are connected. So yes, Jesus is on the main line, but if you're not connected to that line, you can't hear from him. Now, the, the way that a non-believer hears from him is they accept, they hear that word and they harden not their heart and they accept what, what's being said and what's done there in and through the, the cross. 
the, the sacrificial death that Jesus did, suffered, bled and died for there at the cross, the, it, how he, he died in place of us and, and, and securing our salvation. We didn't have to die. We didn't have to do the work. He did every bit of it for us. But, but we don't have to die. Now, the connection is very important. Even in the things of, of nature, we, we pick a rose. We go out and we, we take our, our, our little loppers or, or, or cutters and we clip that, that, that rose and, and from the stem and that rose is very beautiful. But because that rose has been disconnected, time will, get, will, will show what that rose really is when you cut it off. When you clip the, the end of that rose, it's beautiful for, for a period of time. But time will tell the story and it'll start to wither. The pebbles will, will begin to fall off. Why? It's because disconnected is dead. If you're disconnected, you're dead. If we're not connected to Christ, the, Paul, the Apostle Paul said, you, are, you were once dead in trespasses and sin. In other words, you weren't connected to the main line. You, yes, you are, you, you are a part of the human race, but you were never connected to Jesus Christ. But so he quickens us because of what he did, the day that we trust him as our Lord and Savior, he quickens us. He makes us alive. He brings life back into us. So Jesus is talking to his disciples here, giving them the, these the final instructions. He gave a whole lot and it, it encouraged them a lot. He talked to them in these chapters about the comforter that he was going to send, that was going to lead them and guide them in all ways of truth. He would be the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. He would tell them before he leaves that, that the Holy Spirit is going to come and he's going to be there with you and he's going to be there so that you will be my witnesses both here in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and in the uttermost parts of the world. You wonder why you can't witness? Wonder why you don't have a witness? It's because you may not be connected. When the Holy Spirit comes, you have a connection because he's living there in you. When he comes into your life, the day that you trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit is placed inside of you and he is that, that power to, 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 to help you go out and be a witness of the Lord. You can't go out. Jesus told his disciples then, he said, wait until you are endued with power from on high. You need that power to go out and witness. So he says here in, in the first verse of this chapter, he says, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman or the vine dresser. He is the one that keeps the vine. He is the one that owns the fruit, the, the vine that and the fruit that, that, that is on the vine, even the, the vine itself. He, so he says, I am the true vine. He is the true vine. He is the, the, the way that we receive our nutrients. That's, that's the Lord himself. And God, God the Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Now that scripture has tripped a lot of people over the years because they miss other things that, that, that Jesus said as he was teaching. He said there in the 10th chapter of the gospel of God in St. John, he said, these are my sheep and I give to them eternal life. How long is eternal? It's, it's not until you mess up. Eternal is forever and ever. So if, if you're in him, he said, you shall not perish, but have eternal or everlasting life there in the third chapter of the gospel according to St. John, the 16th verse. So if you have everlasting life, if you're in him, you got to read the in him part. You can't miss the in him, in me part there in, in the, the, the third and fourth word in this verse, every branch in me, that's, these are branches that are in him. They're already in him that bear not fruit, he taketh away. So what is the word we need to understand there? I believe it's the word we need, to, the, the word we need to understand is that he taketh away. Now in the, the King James version that we just read, that's the word, the way that we look at it. 
Sometimes it confuses us because we don't want to get into the Greek terminology of it. But it's in the Greek terminology that we understand what the word is really saying. Because if you are in him, you are connected to him. You are his sheep. He has promised you that you have eternal life. So what is happening here at this point, if you are a part of, if you are connected to this vine, every branch that is in me, he said, in me, already in him, he, Aero is, is the word for it. Aero, we, he lifts up. That's the Greek word for this. He, he lifts, lifts this up. As the winter time goes on, the branches fall and sometimes they get into the mud and, and the dirt. And, and when, the, when, the, when the vine dresser comes through, when, when he comes through and he sees this vine there in, in the dirt, he lifts it up and probably props it up or ties it to another part of it that will never fall in the dirt, lifts it up so that now it can bear fruit. It can't bear fruit like that. Every branch that's in me that's bearing not fruit, then there's something wrong with it. Maybe it's in the dirt and it's disconnected at this time. Maybe it needs to be lifted up. Maybe it needs to pray that he will lift it up out of the dirt. Maybe it chose to be in the dirt, but he lifts, the, lifts it up out of the dirt it's what it says, what, what the scripture says here. As a matter of fact, there's a colon after that, which means, let me further explain. He says, in every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it bring forth more fruit. So even the branches that bear fruit, so we, we might say prune, he prunes it, or he takes away everything that doesn't need to be there, those, those little dead leaves that, that are there, he, he clips them off. Kata Aria, uh, Eero, the, the, the just extending that other word, that was lift up, but now it's lift up and clean. So now he cleanses that is what this word means. To, 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 to purge it means to clean it. Now it, it's been in the dirt and, 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 and this one has been, been bearing fruit, trying to push the fruit out, even though it's too low to the ground, but he lifts it up and he cleans the dirt off of it so that it can bear even more fruit. It's because it is, is still abiding and it's connected. That's, that's what we're getting to. Now, how does it do that? Jesus goes on here because he, he's, he's, he's talking in, in words to give them a picture of how things go in the connection to him, in the Christian walk, as, as he would be the head of the church. Now ye are clean. How? The word which I have spoken unto you. Through the word which I have spoken unto you. The, the, the way the cleansing happens, the cleansing agent for the, 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 the branches that have fallen into the dirt, the cleansing agent is the word himself. He's saying, you that have fallen, you that, have, that I've lifted up because you weren't bearing fruit, you that were bearing fruit, but weren't bearing enough fruit, now you can bear much fruit. This is the way that I clean you. This is the way that I lift you up through my word, through the word that I've spoken unto you. It's the word that, that, that he speaks to you, that he cleans you through. You wonder why everything is so dirty in your life? Have you been receiving the word? Have you desired the word? Have you wanted the, and hungered for the word? Those that hunger for the word, they'll, they'll be filled. They, if they hunger and thirst, even after righteousness, this, Jesus said, you'll be filled. Now you are clean through the words which I have spoken unto you. The word, the word. It said, it, it's not words as, as I said it just then with an S on the end, it's the word. Anything that Jesus said, it was the word. Because who is the word? John told us that in the first chapter of the gospel according to St. John, that in the beginning was the word. So Jesus is the word. Those words that he spoke to you. And he says here in verse four, abide in me and I in you as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. He said, abide in me. That means stay right where you are because now you are in me, in me. Yes, we, we find ourselves, even though we are Christians, even though we have accepted him as our Lord and Savior, why is he asking us to abide in him? It's because we can forget that he's there sometimes. Life and circumstances of life can get us there. 
That's why these to we're told by the Apostle Paul that let the strong bear the infirmities of the weak because every now and then, even the strong is the weak one. And that person, that other person that may have been weak yesterday is the strong today because they can bear the infirmities of that person. They can tell them how to get out of that mess because they've been there before. They can encourage that person. So now he says, abide in me. If you stay right there in the center of my love and I in you, here is why. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, the, the rose that have been cut off, it's, it's not going to have, have any more pebbles that grow on it. It's not going to stay green and, and, and the red leaves are not, the pebbles are not going to stay red for long. They're not going to stay yellow for long, uh, chocolate for long, the, the, or, or, or white for long. They're not going to stay that way because he's been cut off it, 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 from, the, from the vine. It's, it's going to die. It, it, it has died. When you cut it off, it's just something that's dead that's, that's there. So apart from the Lord, if we don't stay right there, we'll start looking like that rose. We'll, we'll start withering up. That The good thing about it is he's in you and he can bring you back and he'll keep you. And uh, he, he said his Holy Spirit is there to seal you to the day of redemption. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, apart from him, there'll be no fruit bearing in your life. In other words, if you've turned your back on the Lord, if you're not hanging around the things of the Lord, if you're not constantly being cleansed by the word of the Lord, then, then you have gotten to the place where there's no fruit bearing in your life. I'm not just talking about bringing people to Christ because sometimes you may be, have the life of Jeremiah. You just preach and teach all your life and nobody ever comes that, as, that you can see, but your life will be a testimony for people later on down the road. So that, that's the way Jeremiah's life was. But the fruit bearing here is your connection with the Lord. The, the, you cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. You need the vine for your nutrients, for, for the things that you need so that you can bear fruit, so that fruit will burst forth from you. No more can ye except ye abide in me. No, you can't, you can't do this except you stay right there with the Lord. Stay right there in the center of his love and stay right there where he can protect you from, from some of those things in life. Why do I say some of them? Because some of them are, are to encourage you, to, are to grow you up or to, to get you to the place where the next thing won't bother you as much. Yes, I know the song says, Lord, don't move my, uh, move my mountain, but give me the strength to climb. The reason it says give me the strength to climb because you don't know what the next mountain is going to be. So get you a rope and, 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 some, and some, some spikes and start getting across that mountain and stop complaining about it because the, this mountain is just getting you ready for the next one. No more can ye, ye, ye except ye abide in me. You can't bear fruit. There, there won't be any happiness, joy, and peace in your life. There, there won't be any long suffering in your life. That, that all of those fruit of the spirit, those things won't be in your life. And the one that leads into the the, the rest of the characteristic of the fruit of the spirit, the the main one, there won't be any love. Jesus said that love is the way that he, he people even know that you are one of his disciples. They know that you are his disciples by the love that you have for one another, for other people, even for those that don't love you, that don't care about you, that would just just as soon step on you as they would to speak to you. So, so that's the way that, that that's the identifying mark. You don't have that desire to say one day I'll see you in hell. It's, it's totally different. You want them to be walking around in heaven with you. No more can ye except ye abide in me. You can't have the fruit of the spirit. Verse five says, I am the vine. The Lord Jesus is talking. All of these things that, that, that's in this, this part right here in your Bible is in red. This matter of fact, this whole 15th chapter is in red in, in a study Bible, which means all of these things are what Jesus said to his disciples, talking to them. I am the vine. He wanted them to know. They knew that he was the Lord. Thou art the Christ, 
the son of the living God. The apostle Peter said and proclaimed about Jesus Christ in the 16th chapter of the gospel according to St. Matthew. And, and here Jesus says that I am the vine. I am the place that you receive your nutrients. All the things that you need to grow are in, are in me, uh, they're found in me. You are the branches. I'm the vine. You are the branches. You're not the vine. You are not the source of the of, of, of the nutrients. You're not the source. I am the source. Yes, there is a, a, a great light that is shining, but you are not the light. You may be a reflection of the light. Jesus is that light. And you can shine all over people, but remember where the, the light that you are shining on people comes from, and it's the Lord. He said, I'm the vine. Ye are the branches. Keep let's let's keep this straight is what the Lord is saying. It's you that are, are the branches. He that stays in me, that abides in me, that stays right there in the in the center of my love, that 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 stays and, and keeps his mind stayed on the things of God. It, he'll keep you, the scripture says, in perfect peace. He that abide in me and I in him. I, I'll stay in you. The same bringeth forth much fruit. There's a whole lot of love in that person. There's a whole lot of long-suffering in that person. How do you know when you're long-suffering when people get on your nerves and you don't snap like you used to? You know that things have changed in, in, in your life. When you have, uh, when your faith is getting greater, it, it seems to be getting greater. You have all you need, but it seems like it's getting stronger right right now. All, as things are going on in your life, it, nothing can can shake your faith. The same bringing forth much fruit. That person that abide in Him and He in them. Here is where He He ends this. He said, "Where we ended, for without me, you can do." nothing. He said, without him, we can do nothing. Nothing that is fruitful, nothing that is produ productive, nothing that is constructive. Only things that are destructive can a person without the Lord do. It, it, without him, he said, you can do nothing. So without being connected, there's nothing we can do in the spiritual realm, in the in the things of, of, of God to lead a person to the Lord. To, we need to abide in him. How do we abide in him or how do we get to be connected? Because that's the most important part. We started there at the beginning of this saying that the way that we get connected is we trust the gospel message. It is the gospel message that Jesus Christ came and he died for your sins and mine. He died substitutionarily to pay our sin debt, not part of it, but every bit of our sin debt in full, all of it paid in full. He could have wrote you out a letter. As a matter of fact, he did. It's the Bible. It's, it paid in full. All the debt has been paid. You have your receipt. It's the word of God. You are cleansed now through the word of God. But there are some that don't accept it and they, they don't have the receipt and they sit there and they sing a, sing a song talking about save a seat for me. Can't nobody save your seat in heaven. You have to acquire your own and you acquire that by trusting the fact that Jesus Christ died for your sins, that he was buried in a borrowed tomb. The apostle Paul said, according to the scripture, and on the third day, God raised him from the dead, never to die again. Those, those things are according to the scripture. That is good news. If the newspaper would just put that in there, they would have good news every day. If they just make that the headline story, it'd be good news every day that Jesus has taken care of your sin debt. He has paid the, t the total penalty, paid the total price. The things that you're doing now that's rebellion against him, you can't hardly stop those things until you trust him as your Lord and Savior. Then he can put his Holy Spirit inside of you and he can cleanse you from the inside out from those things that want to rip you and tear you apart and separate you from the Lord. But he said in his love, no one can separate us the Apostle Paul said in the 8th chapter of Romans, from the love of God. The connection is through Jesus Christ. His death, 
his burial, and then that heralding resurrection day when he got up from the grave, never to go, go down into the grave again, but become our first fruit of things to come. Now, everyone that trusts him, there'll be a bodily resurrection. Those that in him, he told Martha, he said, those in me, though they be dead, yet shall they live. As a matter of fact, those in me will never die. That is the hope that we have as Christians. When, when a loved one that is in the Lord dies, they just change places. The, the apostle Paul said, changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Father God, we do thank you today for the study of your word. And Father, we do pray that you will help us to understand that we need to be connected. Those that may not be connected, help them to understand that Jesus Christ died for their sins, Lord, and saved them before it's everlasting too late. Father, we do pray that you will search our hearts. Forgive us of sin. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.